when you zoom in someone is playing this fiction. Yeah. Hey man. Hey,
thank you, Lord. All you want to do is to touch your coming, oh God. And this morning, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we check up for more, I even need a man to kill me. Kapan de Paco, the Panamis Saman Santa Zedek Seni, the Gonga, when I check up for more, Tikona Manda, Tikona Musa, when a Tete Yawatuta, a Teta Manjo, okay, I'm Sanzek Seni. We come before your throne, O oh God, the throne of mercy, the throne of grace, O oh God, surrendering all to you, O oh God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has come more than ten hours. You alone, O God, Father, you reign in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. City Pagaman Zulu, Kevishadalo, City Pagaman Nikas Wabombe, City Pagaman. Melusi when get down, you alone are God. We exalt your name this morning. We give you glory, O God, for you are the King of Kings, the Lion of Judah, the King of Kings, in Jesus' mighty name. You are Alpha and
Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. For he deserves it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. that you do, in everything that we do, let our confidence be in our Lord. But only Him can open them. Hallelujah. Only Him can open them. Don't, don't buy that. I, I help you. I open the door for you. I will know me if I close it. No one can help you. I'm the only one. No. There's God in heaven. Praise the Lord.
Jongwe. Brother Jongwe. Come on, come on over here. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, let's hear me. He also has to give a special song. So let's give me a wonderful, wonderful song.
Mimi si achagula. Praise God. Amen. I don't want to say anything. I'm just standing up to open the floor. Oh, yes. To hear the testimonies, to hear the preaching and so forth. Last week we had a great service. Oh, yes. There were great insights Amen. from the brothers that spoke last week. And um, if you have been thinking about it and meditating about it, you can easily pick from there and uh, carry the week through and bring us to this, to this day. I, I, want, I like what Brother Chauke said when he talks about the processes yes. that God takes his children through. Amen. And the uh, processes is not always simple. Yeah. The processes are not always spelled out. No. He said God does not give details. Uh, he has the script. You know, it's like a movie director. You, they keep you anticipating and expecting what is going to be the next thing. A good director, a good film director, will not make it clear. Like you can tell where the movie is going to end. You know, like some movies that you watch from some place that you know, okay, this is going to end there, 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 there. You can actually write the script yourself. But a good and a great director will keep you guessing. He will want you to wait and to work and to expect what is going to be the next thing. What's going to happen next? You do not anticipate. If you anticipate, I mean, I mean I'm talking about telling what's going to happen, you are not a good film director. You know, and I think some of us, some of you have watched various series on television, Netflix, and you can't wait for the green leaf to come back. I don't know whether it's finished or it's still coming, but it was so much mind grasping. Well, I don't want to talk about the queen of the south and uh, the man has, you know, and in the church. But, but these were good film directors that wrote those things. Because you keep on expecting. So what's going to happen? You know, that's what God does. God does that best. When he, when he started a journey with your life, you were not born with the script of your life. Nobody is born with a book of his life or her life with all the details, how you are going to go there, how you're going to be disappointed there, how you're going to be successful there, how you're going to overcome that, how you're going to be defeated there. It's all in the hands of God. It's all in the, to in the control of God. And that's why, that's what makes him God. He is unpredictable. He's, uh, his ways past finding. Uh, his mind, nobody knows. The, the scripture says, in Job or Solomon says, who has been his counselor? Who, who has sat with him and advised him? Who can give counsel unto God? But the Bible says, known unto God. Uh, Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Known unto God are all his ways from the beginning to the end. And another scripture says he declares the end from the beginning. In other words, God already knows the destination before we reach that destiny. Before we reach that point, wherever I am going to end, God knows exactly when I will end. So the singer sang a song and said, I am not afraid to trust him for he is on my side. What is very important is to know that God got you. God got you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It doesn't matter the situation is right now. It might be upside down. Feet up, head down. But one thing you need to know is that God got this. I may not know what's happening right now. I may not be able to figure out how I'm going to come out of it. But one thing for Satan, one thing for sure, is that God got this. Hallelujah. You look at that situation and say, God got you. You know, and then you condition him and say, God got you. Whether it is a sickness, whether it is a setback, whatever is going on, God got it. Hallelujah. Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. And the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are upon the face of the earth, beholding the good and the evil. Everything. Everything is figured out in the, in the, in the hands of the Lord. He, he is in total control. If it's the word total, it is a limitation in our vocabulary. But God 
is in complete control. Complete control. Language is limited to express how God got this universe. How God got this figure out. Hallelujah. But it says even the angels, they were not knowing what God was going to do. As Jesus was hanging on the cross. As Jesus died. But they knew, the angels knew that he has life in himself. They knew that. They knew that he cannot die. There's no way the Son of God can die. They knew that he is the one who created everything. John chapter 1 verse 1. He said the word, the, in the beginning was the word. Come on, go ahead. And what? And what? And the word was God. And what? And the word became flesh and was manifest among us. And he was the light that yes. shone in the darkness, but darkness could not comprehend him. Yes. And what? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the John gave witness for that word. Hallelujah. He came. He was there in the beginning. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22. He said, The Lord possessed me from the foundation of the world. He says, I was his daily delight. Nothing created outside of him. A lot of people make a mistake. They say, God created this one. No. God created nobody. God created Jesus only. And then Jesus created everything. Yes. Amen. Get that correct, corrected. Get that religion. Yes. Or that theology corrected in your head. Yes. Give me the scripture, brothers, if you can. Or sisters. That one. Hallelujah. Amen. But God created Jesus. And Jesus, I want to scream that louder. And Jesus created everything. Hallelujah. But even the angels could not comprehend what God is doing. Now Jesus is dead. Hallelujah. On Calvary, on the cross, he is dead. The Bible says even the sun could not shine. The sun which was created by Jesus, could not shine. And the sun was darkened. Yes. Was it for now? In Jerusalem, midday, there was no sun. The sun could not behold the Son of God on the cross. The God man, the divine man, on the cross, dying. And the sun, as a creature, created by God. I'm on Romans chapter 8 from verse 19. That's where I am. And the Son, all those things that were created, could you not behold the Son of God on the cross, dying, and the sun became dark. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Amen. And the dead that had died in Jerusalem, the symmetries opened up. Hallelujah. And the dead were seen walking in the streets of Jerusalem when Jesus died. What about heaven? The angels were bewildered. The angels were amazed. What is God going to do? And the devil said, my God, I got this. Now it's over. Now it's done. First day, ah, it's over. Second day, ah, this is a complete job. Third day, my God. On the third day, there were women we had gone to the to the civics, to the garden to do what they had to do over the body of Jesus Christ. And they went there into the grave and found that there was nobody, only the cross that we had wrapped him as a culture, as a custom of burial of the Jewish custom. But he was not there. And the stone was rolled out. Who rolled out the big stone? Who did that? The angels did that. And Jesus sitting in the garden. The woman looking at this man. Thinking he's the gardener. The cemetery keeper. Says, Lord, do you know where they put him? Do you know where they put my Lord? Do you know where they put him? I have been to the sea, to the grave. The grave is empty. There's only the cloth who bear. Where have they put him? But Jesus said, Mary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sheep hear my voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Are we able to hear the voice of God the same way Mary could hear that this is not the garden I caught? And Jesus said, Mary, why are you seeking for the living among the dead? And she heard the voice. And she recognized the voice. And when she went to run to, run to him to, to impress him, and she said, Rabon. And Jesus Christ said, don't touch me yet. For I have not yet ascended to my father. But go and tell Peter and my disciples that I go to my father and I go to your father. And I will meet them in Galilee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a lot of lesson right there. Because a lot of us think when we die, immediately in the hands of God. That's what we think, right? That's what we've been taught at Sunday school. That's what we've been taught in Bible colleges, in theological seminaries. Yeah. That when you die, immediately in the hands of God, absent in the body, present in the spirit, right in the bosom of Father Abraham. But Jesus, after three days, uh -huh. he says, I have not yet Gone to the Father. Right. So where was he? In our concept, in our thinking, in our theology. Where was he? Right. Was he just roaming around in the air? Was he, was, was he just in the trees or in the mountains? No. no. But when a man died, he's dead indeed. Yes. Nothing has moved up. Nothing has gone anywhere. Right. He's dead. Hallelujah. Amen. The dead are dead. Hallelujah. They are not alive somewhere. They have not transferred into the atmospheric heavens. They have not moved out a live soul and gone and captured some other space. When you die, you are dead. Amen. Peter speaks in the book of Acts chapter 2. He said, David being a prophet. Hallelujah. David being a prophet. He prophesied that thou would not leave my soul in hell. Right. Another correction right there. Mm -hmm. We correct as we go. We fix this vehicle as we drive it. David prophesied that thou would not leave my soul in hell. In our theology, in contradistinction to our theology, we say the soul comes out. That's what we're taught. That's what we're from Sunday school, from whatever. The soul comes out. But David said, prophesy, and uh, concerning the death of Christ and the resurrection, put in the eighth chapter 2, verse 18, 19, check there. And he says, Thou would not leave my soul. Get that word. Thou would not leave. My soul in hell. Yeah. Now, two corrections. Soul in hell. What is hell? We have heard this before. Huh? We have heard a lot about the hell. Yes. Hell. Now, I, 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 I'm preaching now and I didn't want to preach. But anyway, let me help you quickly. Let me just give you nuggets. Let me just be a good film director so that you come back again next week. All right? Let me just give you Jesus. Have you got it? Pick up to verse 26. Pick up again. All right, let's go there. 25. Give me my Bible. That's it. Bless this word of name. That will Okay. David speaking. Concerning him. And remember, David was long gone. Gone, 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 slow and gone. But these men of God, as they spoke, as they wrote the songs, as they wrote the Psalms, yes. they wrote concerning the things that were to come. Amen. That when we see those things happening, we'll be able to say, That says the Spirit. Oh, yes. Jesus Christ read the book of Luke, chapter 4, is that right? When he went into the temple. Right? They give everybody a book to read. Yes. And in the book, he began to read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. So I was reading the book of Isaiah. Right. And uh, he says, He's anointed me 
to preach the good, the good news. To bring the good tidings. Hallelujah. To set the captives free. Alright? And when he finished, he didn't even finish Isaiah. The actual scripture he was quoting in the book of Isaiah, he cut it in the middle. He did not finish that scripture. But because the scripture was fulfilled in part. The, the whole scripture was not fulfilled. He, he read the part where the scripture was being fulfilled. But the rest of the scripture was for another time to come. So he cut it to where exactly it was being fulfilled. He has sent me, sent me to set the captives free. Okay? And what? Oh, you assume that one, fine. To set the captives free. But there was way it was going to declare. Alright? The day of the Lord. That you did not, you did not read. Because Jesus, his first mission was to preach the good news. To set us free. We were in the day of Sponsha. But now by his death, we are now having eternal life through believing in Jesus Christ. The Bible says this is eternal life. To believe in Jesus Christ and in God the Father. That's eternal life. Jesus says he that believes only me. If he lives, he dies. He shall live again. That's eternal life. Right? Even if you die, you will live again. Amen. The hour coming and now is that was the dead that are in the grave. John chapter 5, verse 28, from verse 25, 28, 29, 31. The hour has come that those that are in the dead shall hear my voice. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. If you believe in Jesus, you have life. That's why nobody else matters, should be matter. No one else should be made more, maybe let me put it that way, than Jesus. Because he's the one who can give you life. No man, no woman can give you life. You don't have to kill yourself over a woman. You don't have to kill yourself over a man. And yet you hear someone who committed suicide because Jesus did not love him. No. But we, we are both just like Martha. We are both that about many things. We are supposed to be like Mary, the other sister, who sat on the feet of Jesus and kept on feeding and feeding and feeding upon the word of God. We, we are, many of us are the mothers. We are worried about food. We are worried about what you're going to eat. We are worried about what you're going to clothe. We are worried about where you're going to stay. We, we are mothers. In our lives, Martha epitomizes most of us. But Mary, Jesus once said about Mary, he said, Mary has sought something that will never be taken away from her. He says, Martha, Martha, thou art troubled about many things. You come by about many things. We are troubled with so many things. But there's something that should just preoccupy us. Nothing else but that. Hallelujah. And Mary had found that thing. And she sat on the feet of Jesus. She was feeding from the spirit of Jesus. She was hearing the word of God. For it is the way that giveth life. The flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The words that are spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. If any man hear my words, and Mary sat down on the feet of Jesus. What was she doing? Feeding. And Jesus said, that which she had taken, she has had, she has had, right? No one will take away from her. We need and I, 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 I was saying to Sister Grace, and the sisters already come, coming to church, I said, I'm so hungry this morning. I am a customer, I don't eat breakfast, I can't eat breakfast on Sunday. I, my, my, my mind, my spirit is just on somewhere else. And I can't eat breakfast, it's very difficult to sit down and eat breakfast Sunday morning. 
And as usual, like, they now know they don't prepare breakfast for me. But I last ate yesterday around 3 o'clock. So I said, I'm very hungry. I'm feeling very hungry. You know? But I ate a lot of things yesterday. But I'm already hungry. The things that bothers us a lot, they don't last. The things that troubles us a lot, they don't last. There's nothing that we have on this earth that lasts forever. There's nothing. Whatever it is, we've been mentioning, they don't even want to waste your time going through one by one. None of them last. They are all temporal. Paul says the earthly treasures are fleeting and passing. I wish to God we can get this revelation to understand that nothing on this earth is permanent. And then we can start seek for those things that are above. That no man can take away. Excuses that we come up with from doing the work of God are so much. Yet we have no excuse whatsoever from doing the things that perish, from doing the things that disappear. That man, we had planted so much, we had harvested so much, he said, my soul, they've done so well. Now, your plants, your existing storehouses are not enough to accommodate all your harvest. Now, this one thing you should do, demolish the existing storehouses and build larger ones. So that you can sit and eat and enjoy the fruits of your labor. That's what we say, right? When we're doing what we're doing, when we live the life we live, say, I'm enjoying the fruits of my labor. That's not bad. That's okay. But how about the inner man? How much have you fed the inner man? How much have you given the inner man? Is the inner man well fed and well looked after like the outward man that perish? If you put them on the scale, right. on, the, on the way you scale, will the attention that you give to the outer man that you perish be lesser than the attention you give to the inner man? We need to spend time dealing with ourselves. Amen. 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 We spend a lot of time dealing with other people, working in other people's lives. Paying attention in other people's lives and very little attention to ourselves. We are so much outward looking, more than inward looking. But Jesus said to Mary, Mary has sought something that will never be taken away uh, from her. Hallelujah. So Jesus was in the grave three days and three nights. He was nowhere. His soul was dead. His body was dead. Amen. In the Bible, in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, I think, it says, Lord, I come in the volume of the book. Or in the volume of the book, it is written of me. Hallelujah. Do you know in the custom of the Jews, when they hang somebody, over a crime that they've committed. Before they bury them, they want to come and break the, their knees and break their elbows yes. so that there's no chance that that person might come out or might get down to assure that what? The person is dead. Yeah. But when Jesus died, they came to do exactly that. But there's Thrust a spear on his side, and water and blood came out, showing that the man is already. They did not have to break the bones because Jesus was to be resurrected with that body. He was to be raised immortal with that body. But if they broke it, there was nothing that was going to happen. Are you hearing me? But God in his infinite wisdom, as we say, God is in control of the thought of men. All the people you think they're putting something on you, they got nothing on you. Because they will not do anything until and unless God allows them. 
Is it this your time? Let's go. Because the Bible says he has put his confidence in him that was able Hallelujah. to raise him. Right. Amen. The Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Are you opening your Bible? I'm preaching the Bible. Hallelujah. 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 I'm preaching the Bible. I'm preaching the word of God. Amen. For David being a prophet, what did David prophesy? David prophesied a lot about Jesus. Right. Many times. There were times David would speak as David. And there were other times David would speak as a prophet. Hallelujah. David would get anointed. And he would start to prophesy. In some hundred and ten, for example. He was not talking about himself. He said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy fruits too. Then one apostle says, who, Of whom was David talking about? Of himself or of another man? That's some hundred and ten. The Lord said to my Lord, two laws. We use we use the scripture Lord when we prove God here. The Lord, one Lord, first Lord, say it to my Lord, second Lord. Sit thou on my right hand yeah. until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Now he was not talking of himself, he was talking of Jesus. Jesus. Because as you go down the word of God, you get to Acts chapter 7. Stephen, when he was being stoned, he said, Behold, I see the heaven open. And Jesus standing on the right hand of the majesty. Oh, yes. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, the Bible makes it clear that Jesus is now in heaven. Next to his father. The throne of the Father and the throne of the Son. But let's finish David being a prophet. Praise God. Verse 23. Verse 22. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, among you by many miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Him, Jesus, being delivered by the determined counsel of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Underline that word, determined. I don't know what your Bible says, but the King James Version says, Him being delivered by the determined. Now, determined, that means unwilling and unable to change. God was determined that Jesus should be must be crucified. No amount of persuasion was going to change that. Oh yes. No amount of mercy from the rulers of the time was going to change that. Everything had to go wrong. Right. So that he gets crucified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. When God wants to straighten, I'm, I'm, I'm taking from brother Gessler. That's what I'm pulling from. Today, when God wants to help you, and he wants to help you, him alone, even the people that usually help you, they'll fold their hands. And you wonder, what has happened to my friends? What happened to my family? Where is my family? Where, is, where are my friends? God froze them. Amen. Amen. Because he is wanting to pull something uh -huh. out of you. Amen. Because all the time family comes to rescue us. All the time friends comes to rescue us. And we start to believe more of our friends and believe more of our family than we believe God. And God does not share his glory. He's a jealous God. He wants to remain the center of attraction. He wants to remain the center of your praise, the center of your worship, the center of your adoration. But when men keep on coming, you start 
to look up to those men and women that are helping you. But God can shut down. Just like Eskom shut down power. Hallelujah. God can shut down oh, yes. all help. And you may be having a bad spirit and very upset. And thinking these people, what kind of people are these? God has just shut them down. There's nothing in them that feels like, let me help him. Let me help him. They want to, but they just get tired before they execute. Because no one can say, and it comes to pass, except and unless God commands it. Lamentations of Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 37. Nobody, I wish to God, saints of God, have this personal revelation. Because we are so weak and frail spiritually. Our attention, our focus is so divided. We think God later on even people come to help you. God has to touch them. Yes. Jesus said without me you can do nothing. A man can receive nothing unless it is given from above. But God does not release a basket of food from heaven himself. He does not send clothes or send you a credit card. That's why we should not believe these things of debt, annihilation, disappearing mysteriously in your bank accounts. No. God will give you a job. God will bless a sister to buy some groceries for you. God will take somebody to take some clothes from their wardrobe and say, I'm going to give sister brother so and so. That's God. But most of the time, we think the giver, which we should, more than the one who motivated oh, to give. But yes. God can, God, his eyes, man. Oh, his eyes, man. They're in your house, oh, even when the lights are off. Oh, his eyes, man. Hallelujah. He foresees an accident before it happens. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. When the witch is coming, the wee hours of the morning, 3 a.m., God sees all those witches. I always, I always say, and I said to my friends, business friends this week, I said, for you to not get COVID, it is not because you are circumspect, no. it's not because you are careful, but the many times you touch the surface where God was breathing like this. Oh. And like, hey, he touches me, but I can't touch you. She touched me, but I can't touch it. Because they say it can stay. On, on surfaces or stainless steel 72 hours alive. There were many times you came across somebody yes. fully yes. fully matured with it. And they spoke in the spirit. There are some the spiritual droplets they landed on your lips. But you never touched it. Because even the very evil even the very is under the control of God. Hallelujah. Ah, Pastor, really? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Because if that evil was not under the control of God, none of us be here. Yes. The evil that was sent to you and that people wished it to happen to you, if it was carried out. There's a scripture like that. Just stand up and read it, brother. I form the light. I form the light. And create darkness. And create darkness. I make peace. I make peace. And create evil. And create evil. I the Lord. I the Lord. Do all these things. Yes. Yes. Isaiah 45. But I want the one in Proverbs too. Evil is under the control of God. Are you hearing me? There are some times you cannot change someone's path. 
As much as you want to change when God wants them to go that way. I hope to God is not a destructive path. Because no one can tell it. Who has subverted? The Bible says in the book of Lamentations of Jeremiah chapter 3, who has subverted his will? King James Virgin used that word, subverted. Who has subverted his will? So, and you as a child of God, you need to be thankful that evil is under the control of God. Well, if evil was unleashed and it just comes and it hits, you would not be here. Whoa. So thank God. Hallelujah. He controls evil. Ah, yes. Amen. <laughs> thank God. He controls good. Amount of goodness that comes my way, it is under the control of God. Because if goodness had come only when the way I want it to happen, I might not worship God. Solomon says, you know, if you give me too much, too much good, I'll forget you. And I don't want too much good because I don't want to forget you. He says, and you know that evil also comes from you. So, and I don't want too much of it in case I, I kiss you. You know, Job came to a point whereby things were getting tough. Thank God. The remainder of the wrath thou shalt restrain. The wrath of man shall praise thee. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There are sometimes people come to make things very hard in your life. You hear words. People will say things. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, hateful things. Terrible things. Amen. Amen. And when those things happen, they, if you are a child of God, most of the time, they will drive you to the altar. They will drive you to what? To prayer. Instead of having the spirit to revenge, they develop in you the spirit to forgive. Amen. But what is brought this? The wrath of man. Man, I put a seat at the book of Psalms. The wrath of men shall praise thee. Mark that. The wrath of men shall what? There's a certain amount of evil that God permits to hit you. But sometimes if things are going well all the time, we forget that God is in heaven and we forget to look unto him. Only him. We begin to have clutches. Like someone who has got a head leg, a broken limb, they use clutches. And men in life, we have developed so many clutches. Things that we depend on. We rely a lot on our education, on our connection, on our network, on our business, acumenship, all these things. But sometimes we need them to be trained away. All right? But God knows when to stop. Hallelujah. All right? He knows when to stop. Uh-huh. Man doesn't know when to stop. But God knows when to stop. Even though he sent, he allowed the devil to touch Job. He did, right? But he allowed him to a certain extent, to a certain degree. Even though the brothers of Joseph meant it for evil but God meant it for good they had to be so cruel those 11 brothers to keep Joseph to his destiny alright yes. am I speaking to someone Are you making, am I making sense yes. they, they, some of them Levi and Simeon the instruments of cruelty the Bible calls them that way the two brothers say so let's kill him and let's see what will happen to his dream. The wrath of men shall praise thee. Alright? Yeah. But the remainder of wrath that shall restrain thee. Yeah. Among the brothers there was Reuben. Yes. Who said, oh, no, no, let's not kill. This is our blood. Yeah. Let's just put him in a pit. Alright? So that he just died there naturally. He didn't want to kill him himself. They want, he wanted to stab him. But in his plan, Reuben 
was that when the brothers are gone and left him in the pigs, you come back and what? Take him out. And rescue him. And say, go home. Come out. Come on. Come on. Somebody say, come on. Come on. Bella, come on. Say, Pastor, come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> what are making progress here? Right. Hallelujah. Amen. But the other says, oh, okay. Then all of a sudden, the Ishmaelites, the tradesmen, appeared. All right. All right. Ah. Instead of going to the pit and business, God did not want Joseph to be rescued. Hallelujah. He wanted Joseph to go to destiny. Yeah. To reach. Amen. Amen. To reach the destiny. Yes. But the path was there. Amen. The Ishmaelites arrived. Said, What's the use? To kill our brother and get nothing. Let's get money out of him. So they sold him to the Ishmaelites and he was a slave to Egypt. God, knowing the determinate counsel, nothing could stop Joseph from reaching Egypt. The determinate counsel, that's what I'm explaining here, made the, the brother Jamie a hard heart. So he gets into this. Wagon. He sees his brother. The wagon is moving. Start seeing a little bit. Maybe he waved. Maybe Reuben was moved. But no one could do anything. Because God's time had come. Amen. Amen. The man had to move towards his destiny. And Brother Chogi said, God did not give the details. But the man must move on. No details. Hallelujah. Amen. And he goes and everything disappeared from view. He's gone. Years goes by. Jer is that Jacob? The father? Yes. He believes my son is dead. He has mourned. He has been comforted. He has taken away the mourning clothes. Years have gone by. But God knowing right. things that have not happened, declaring the end from the beginning, Hallelujah. he knew hunger Hallelujah. will hit the land, right. will hit the world, but Egypt will be plentiful. He said him there. There he can stand this woman who wants to capture him as a painter. He's running from the fire he jumps into the furnace. Amen. Amen. What's happening there? The woman is living out her thoughts. The wrath of men shall praise thee. But the remainder of wrath thou shalt restrain. God might allow and allows people to touch us sometimes. But they will not finish exactly what they want. Oh, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil might touch you sometimes. Hallelujah. But God's determinate counsel, right. he will not allow the devil to finish you off. Hallelujah. Don't you want to thank God for that? Glory yeah. to Jesus. Praise God. I can imagine. Hallelujah. If our enemies were allowed to have a free, la free ride, how many times have people wished you dead? You don't even know. I wish she was not here. But God, He won't allow them their full anger Hallelujah. to carry out its mission. Hallelujah. We might suffer setbacks, but setbacks will not prevail. Hallelujah. The determinant. So Jesus. Being delivered by the determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God. You have taken by the wicked hands, have crucified and slain, whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be staying in the grave. He should be holding of it. For David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face. This is Psalm 16, verse 8. 
before my face. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Hallelujah. Amen. Beautiful Psalm. Psalm 16 verse 8. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my time was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. Hope, 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 hope. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with my countenance. Men and brethren, let me speak freely unto you. Let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch, the ancestor, David. That he is both dead and buried. And his grave sepulchre is with us unto this day. Amen? Amen. So David was touched by the Spirit of God. And he began to prophesy of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he said those things in a prophecy manner of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. So Peter said, let me tell you that David is both dead and buried. And his grave is here with us to this day. But being a prophet, therefore being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Just like the angel told Mary that that you shall be born, shall be called the Son of God. Amen. You shall call his name Jesus. Oh, yes. For he shall take the throne of his father David and rule and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So, Peter is explaining now what happened. He said this before, speak of the resurrection of Christ. Here's that one. That his soul was not left in hell. Neither his flesh did see corruption. Now, if hell is the hell that you are told, that soul and soul is going to hell. So Jesus went to hell. Okay? You don't want that scripture to get a reservoir and remove it. What is hell? What is hell? Uh, this one will go to hell straight. Everybody is going to hell. Are you hearing me? Hell is nothing but grave. Abaddon, Patros, Hades, Sheol, grave. We don't have time. Come next week, we will explain it. Grave means the same thing, Sister Puma. From now onwards, change your theology. Hell is the grave. There's no place that is full of fire, burning people without it. How can you burn forever? And you are not perishing. You are not because, and you are crying in eternal. Fire consumes. Right. Amen. Amen. Logically, fire consumes. You cannot burn in fire forever. Alive, screaming. English tells you something's wrong there. Oh, there! I saw these women, these prophets that tells you this junk. I saw these women that are like this, like this. They were bathing in the hell. Once he says that, even if I was watching on a channel, I changed channel because I know he's lying. Change channel. Hell, Abaddon, Petros, Sheol. Gehenna, one and the same thing. So, here Jesus was in hell. So, what chance did you have if hell is the hell that you were told? If Jesus went to the hell, ah, you need it 500 times. If Jesus, the Son of God, in whom there was no sin, John chapter 1, verse 29, behold the name of God that take away. 
the sins of the world. In whom there is no God. But here, he went to hell. Now what about me? Ah, I got a million more. Million times. Yeah. To show you, when a man die, you die both the flesh and the soul. All right, I'm closing. The soul dies, sister. He will not leave his soul in hell. But the spirit, the soul dies. Because flesh and blood Listen to me. Flesh and everybody say flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. Oh, come on. Flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. Listen to me. Everybody say flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. Cannot inherit. Cannot inherit. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. If you want. So, when, when we talk about the resurrection, what gets resurrected? Anybody? What gets resurrected? I will do this in two minutes. I said, oh, pass <laughs> All right. Okay. When we die, what dies? Because what happens now? You're feeling smart. Because what happens? The heart that pumps blood. You can take another heart from somebody and give it to you. Yeah. Does that mean now your heart has inherited? You are now have inherited the evil of the heart that has been transplanted into you. No. If that person was a murderer or a rapist or whatever, yes. are you now going to be judged? Which heart? Which heart? Let me provoke you a little bit. Don't just go to church and say hallelujah. Amen, amen. When you say, God touch my heart. Which one? Huh? The organ. The organ that pumps blood. No. That one you can be given a pig. You can still function. Yeah. You're right. You can be given a person who has died in the constant and then harvested his organs and they can put to a person who's having a heart dysfunctioning and the person can leave. So now when you say God touch my heart, which one? Yours that was removed or the one that has been transplanted? The heart, the soul, the spirit, the inner man. It's one thing. Touch my spirit. Can you touch it? Bring me your spirit. Touch my heart. And you people bring touch it here. Wow. <laughs> 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 hey, you people bring touch it here. Because of theology. So, let me tell you something. Because time is up. I've got some visitors that I want to say something. Because when you die, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says, 